Hey, eighth grade. So today we're going to start talking about chemistry. So this is a brand new unit for us um, with some review from things that you did in sixth grade. And our main focus question today that we're going to talk about is how is matter organized? So our, our other two, que our two questions that we want to answer is what is the universe made of and how can we actually describe matter? So matter is anything that takes up space, which is considered volume, and anything with weight, which is mass. So this is the stuff that is all around you. You see it, you breathe it, everything around you. Atoms and molecules are all composed of matter. So atoms are made up of a nucleus, and the nucleus of an atom is where the two things called protons and neutrons are held. And then there's also something that orbits around the nucleus, and we call these electrons. There are 118 different kinds of atoms, and they differ because of their own unique number of subatomic particles. And when we talk about subatomic particles, we're talking about that proton neutron and electron. So if we look at the structure of an atom, in the nucleus in this middle area, these green and red things are the protons and the neutrons, and these are sitting inside the nucleus. And then you'll see all of these shells or this cloud ar around the nucleus, and this is where the electrons are held, and this is considered like an electron cloud. So just a reminder, just to also show you some size comparison, the neutron has no charge, the proton has a positive charge, and the electron has a negative charge. So the proton is a large particle that's found in the nucleus of the atom, like we had just talked about. And like we just said, protons have a positive charge. Proton, positive. The neutron is another large particle that's found in the nucleus with the protons. But the neutron have a neutral charge or no or what is also known as no charge at all. So neutron neutral or no charge. And the electrons are really small particles that are found in that electron cloud that surrounds the nucleus. So that's those circles we saw going all around the, um, the nucleus that held the protons and the neutrons. And the electrons have a negative charge. Electron, negative charge. So we're going to start talking about elements. And um, elements... Are, a matter that is only composed of one type of atom. So there's only one type of atom in an element. And these elements are arranged by their characteristics on what we call the periodic table. And we're going to start looking at the periodic table a little bit more in depth. So some things to notice about the periodic table. First, I want you to look at this picture up in the right-hand part of the screen. You have the atomic number, which is six. This is like your jersey number of an, the element. So just like you know um, the number of your favorite quarterback or your favorite point guard, you would know that the, and you can identify them by that number. You can identify the element by this atomic number or this jersey number. And this atomic number is also telling you the number of electrons and the number of protons. The next thing we're going to talk about is the symbol name. And this is usually one or two letters, always starting with a capital, that tells you what type of element you're looking at. So, for instance, C stands for carbon. And now you know that carbon has an atomic number of six. 
The last thing that you see on a periodic table is this number beneath the symbol name. And this is called the atomic mass. And they measure this in atomic mass units. And in, for instance, carbon has 12.01 as its atomic mass. So the number of protons is the atomic number or that jersey number. The number of neutrons e um, is equal to if you take this atomic mass and you round it, so in this case it would become 12, and then you subtract the atomic number, which in this case was 6. So now you have 12 minus 6, which equals 6, and that tells you the number of neutrons. And then the last thing is, is that in any stable element, the number of protons equals the number of electrons. So the number of electrons is also that atomic number. So the number of protons is equals the number of electrons so that the element is balanced in charge in that there is the same amount of positive as there is negative. So this is an example of a very simple periodic table. And in this one, all it shows you is that atomic number and the symbol and not the atomic mass. On the one that you have, for class, though, it does show all of those three things. So once again, let's look at this real quickly. We have this atomic number, which tells us the number of protons and the number of electrons, and it's the element's jersey number. We have a symbol, which is one or two letters. That's an abbreviation. The name is sometimes found underneath that symbol. And then the atomic mass is the mass of an atom of that element. If you look at the periodic table, the elements are listed in order of increasing atomic number. So as the number of protons and electrons goes up, the further you work your way through the periodic table. What is the atomic mass of this element? What is the atomic number of this element? How many electrons does this element have? How many protons does this element have? What is the symbol for this element? What is the number of neutrons for this element. How many electrons does this element have? Go ahead and move on to your periodic table scavenger hunt. Once you've completed that, there is some um, an exit ticket with your questions for the day on it.